What's going on engineers? So you've heard about this webhooks thing, but you have no clue what it is? Well, you're on the right video. In its most basic form, webhooks are nothing more than HTTP messages that are sent usually in response to some event from a third-party service that you're using. They're also sometimes used to describe pre-built API endpoints that you can use to send data to. Webhooks and APIs are so closely related that sometimes webhooks are called reverse APIs because they solve a very important problem with APIs. For APIs, the user, like you and I, will request data from an API, and that API will give a response. A common use case for webhooks is when you're interested in data that changes. So imagine you're writing an application that uses the GitHub API, and you're requesting information about the commits for a given project. Part of your application is you want to perform some action once there's a new commit on that project. Getting that data from GitHub is not very hard. You simply use their API and then you get a list of all the commits for a given project. So in this case, you could record the hash of the last commit and then just run it over and over and over and over again and just keep checking to see if that hash changes. If it does change, then you've, you know there's a new commit and then your application can respond you know, as it should. There's a couple problems with doing it this way. Number one, it's a complete waste of bandwidth and server resources. Uh, but number two, and this is more important, is that GitHub has a cap on the number of API requests you can do. So now enter the world of webhooks, where you can just tell GitHub when there's a new commit, send me a message. In this way, there's no extra bandwidth, no extra API calls, and there's no limits you're going to hit. So I'm using this webhook tester service, which gives me a URL to send my response to. So one thing you do need is a place to send the webhook to. So in my case, it's just the tester. So I can simply go to settings for my repo and go to webhooks. I can add a new webhook. You can paste that webhook, you know, test URL. I can say, give it to me in JSON, enable SSL, send me the whole push event, add a webhook, and we're done. So you can say the hook was created. We sent a ping payload. So coming over to our tester, we see that we did get one post request from GitHub with a little, little phrase here, GitHub hookshot. So I'll just delete these. So now all we're going to do now is just make a commit on this on this test repo I have. So I'll just do event. And you'll see when I push this and go back to this window, and this will happen every time I make a new commit. So if I go just redo it, and just re-push, you'll see a new one shows up here. I can click that, and I get that new commit. Now the information that you get in the webhook is going to be described ahead of time by the vendor that you're using. So in this case, GitHub will tell you that in the webhook we're going to send you, you know, all this stuff. Commits and hashes, dates, and whatever else they want to send. But if this were, say, like a credit card processor, maybe they would send you a webhook for a new charge, which would contain, you know, how much the charge was, who made the charge, and so on. Remember I said there's a second type of webhook where it's a pre-built, kind of pre-built API endpoint, and you can use that to send data to? Well, one example of that is Discord webhooks. Usually when services play nice with one another, you're able to send webhooks from one service to another to attain some new functionality on that other service. So imagine I wanted to post in my Discord server every time there was a commit to a project on GitHub. This would be really easy to do. I could go into Discord under the webhook section and create a new webhook. I can say where I want to post it, and then I can take this URL for the webhook, and I can save it. I would then take that URL, and I would put it into GitHub, so I can add a new webhook. I can use my Discord URL. Discord wants you to put GitHub at the end, that way they know it's from GitHub, and they can do something fancy with it. Set application JSON, send me everything, add webhook. And we're all set. So now that my webhook's created, I have a connection between GitHub and Discord. And I can now make a commit. So I'll do a commit message like, really hope this makes it to Discord. And I can do a push. And once the push succeeds, you can see it popped up over here. GitHub, one new commit. Really hope this makes it into Discord. Keep in mind that it's not always this easy to integrate two services together. The reason this works is because Discord has already looked at GitHub's webhook format and said if you put slash GitHub at the end of the, of the webhook link, Discord will be able to parse that message and then make something nice on your server. Any service that you use that has an API is most likely going to implement at least some webhooks, and that's because there's always going to be data that the user needs to subscribe to. 
Oftentimes, the data you get from a webhook is the same thing you'd get from an API, it's just you're getting it pushed to you rather than pulling that data from an API. In fact, the Engineer Man Knowledge Center actually has a webhook right now. It's not, it's, it's only used internally, but when a new question is posted, there's a message that's sent over to Felix, and Felix posts that into the EMKC Discord channel. However, that could very well be a public feature as well. You know, EMKC could offer up a webhook for people if they wanted to be notified of a new question on their own platform. So I'm just going to go over some additional use cases for webhooks. So like Jira has webhooks, so if somebody creates a new issue, you can push a message over to maybe Slack or, or wherever. Email services might have a webhook for notifying you of somebody who unsubscribed from your emails or perhaps they hit the spam button. You know, their system could notify you of that. CRM platforms might have a webhook for when a new lead is added to notify all the sales members. Of course, GitHub and Bitbucket, they both implement webhooks for roughly the same thing for new push branches, new push commits, and so on. Like an uptime or server monitoring system might have a webhook that pushes a message to Slack or somewhere else. The big takeaway here is that webhooks are the, the necessary supplement to an API because APIs themselves do not handle events. And that's webhooks. Hope everybody understands them better now. So get out there and start slinging events all over the internet. As usual, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.